DreAllDay.com. What I'm going to start doing is, for those of y'all who don't know, those of y'all who watch me here on, on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching this video, IGTV, I write a lot. I write every single day. So I put out new audio material every day. I put out a new video every day and I write every day. But the basis of you know, where I started all this was from my, my pen game, my writing game, well, I guess keyboard game. So I was blogging. That was the first thing I was doing before podcasting, before YouTube. And I've written 25 books. So I like writing and it's a, a really good way to organize your thoughts. And when you put something on paper in writing, I think it's more, you're more committed to what you wrote than something that you say on video or say on audio. So what I'm gonna start doing is taking my written material and I'm gonna make videos out of the written material and I'm gonna put it up here on video. So I'm gonna start with this one. If y'all like these and I'm gonna keep doing it, I might keep doing it whether you like it or not, but we'll see. So this first one here, this title is four mistakes that kill overseas basketball careers before they start. And I might change that title by the time y'all see this on video, but let's get right to it. So I'm kind of reading it, but I'm kind of not. So I'm going to speak it, but I'm going off what I already wrote. This is already out on my website, DreAllDay.com, in case you didn't know. My website, DreAllDay.com slash blog. That's where you can read all my material, listen to my podcast, all that. So playing basketball overseas. That's the next best thing goal of every ambitious basketball player who doesn't have strong NBA prospects. So I don't know how it is for you who might be watching this but if you don't have strong prospects for getting to the league the next best thing you could do is play overseas or in the g league nba or g league the next best thing is playing overseas while most of a player's fans friends and family back home if you're playing overseas they won't see you that much they probably don't quite understand how things work and they may ask you stupid questions like well why don't you play in the nba <laughs> or you ever thought of going pro i get people who ask me i tell them i played overseas they're like you ever thought of going pro i'm like what but you you may have had those questions or somebody asked you something like well how does that work for you the player overseas basketball still offers you a ton of positives besides the fact that aside from the fact that your family probably won't even see you that much number one you're playing basketball for a living i mean i think if you're thinking about playing overseas or trying to play overseas you know that playing ball for a living is better than working a nine to five no regular job Number two, you get to travel the world and see places that you otherwise would never see. You know, for me, I never really spent that much time outside of my hometown of Philadelphia, aside from going to college and a few trips up to my college graduation. I had never really been outside the city, let alone outside the country. But playing basketball professionally allowed me to see, I traveled through eight different countries, damn near everywhere in the United States, all because of basketball. Number three, you have fans. I mean, you're a professional basketball player. You will have fans wherever you play. People who look up to you because of what you can do and the level that you've ascended to. I mean, everybody knows you're a professional and fewer than 1% of athletes ever get to the professional level of any sport. And I don't care how humble of a person you claim to be, every one of us has an ego. And having fans strokes your ego like few other experiences. Number four, you're doing what many basketball players attempt but fail to do which is get your foot in the door and stay in the room of pro basketball, hopefully building a career for yourself and making a name for yourself in the process of doing that. I'm just checking my light here. All right. Number five, you've made it, quote unquote, into the top 1% of basketball players worldwide. Like I just said, 99% of people who ever pick up a basketball will never get paid to play basketball, but you made it and you became one of them. And number six, Probably you make it into you make it depending on what you're getting paid the top 1% of working adults worldwide and not necessarily because of your income, but because you actually enjoy what you do for a living. I mean, there's a lot of people out there and I know people who make what the average person would consider to be a lot of money, but they don't even like their job. They don't even like what they do for a living. So they're borderline or fully miserable, even though they're making themselves a good living. They got a nice car, a nice house. They can take care of themselves financially, but they don't even enjoy what they do with themselves. A professional athlete, not only do you get to do something you love, if you love the game, because there's some pro athletes who don't even love sports. At the same time, you get paid for it. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. So playing basketball for a living is a great gig. I think you probably already know that, even if you haven't played yet. I don't need to sell you or anyone else on, hey, you should play basketball for a living. Most people already are, have sold themselves on that before they even make it, or even if they don't make it. I've never met a person who needed to be convinced 
to keep playing basketball if they knew they had a chance to make money from it. Now, I'm sure there are a few such people out there, but I haven't met them. But anyway, the much bigger challenge is at the other end of the spectrum. This is for you players out there, and I'm assuming many of you watching this video, you want to play overseas, but you haven't been able to make it happen just yet. And the inconvenient truth is, for many of you players who are trying to get on but you haven't yet, that story ain't gonna change because everybody can't make it. There are not enough spots for everybody to get in for one, and a lot of players mess up their own chances of playing overseas via some mistakes and oversights that I'm gonna share with you here in this video. So let's get into those. Number one, these are the mistakes that players make that keep them from playing pro basketball. Number one, lacking the discipline to remain in game shape without a coach or a trainer or a team holding you accountable. I've seen this happen most often to players who are fresh out of college, who are now on their own in training for the first time in their lives. It's the first time they haven't had a coach or somebody on top of them every day telling them what to do and then they fall out of shape. This player now has no coach to schedule and run practices, no teammates working out with you to keep you motivated. Maybe you can't afford a trainer of your own who will keep your ass in the gym and keep you doing stuff that you might not enjoy, but you definitely need to do this stuff. Things like lifting weights, eating right, or getting up early to work out. Doing all this stuff on your own can fit into the box of one word, discipline. Discipline is your capacity to do what you need to do, even when it's not what you want to do. That's what discipline is. And in my experience, the more talented the athlete, the less discipline she or he will need to exert in life, in sports. There are exceptions to this, but this is generally what I've seen. So in other words, the more talented you are, the further you could get even if you don't have discipline. But if you're not that talented, you are a little bit talented, but not super duper talented, you better be disciplined. As a player, I was never in that, no quote, chosen group of super duper talented. I mean, I was talented enough to get in the top 1%, but I wasn't in the 1% of the 1%. I had to scrape and call just to make my high school varsity team, first of all. Then I had to walk on in college and I ended up playing at a D3 school. So no one, no agents, no teams were recruiting me to play pro ball when I got out of college. I had to be disciplined just to make myself a passable player and give myself a chance. A much more talented player than me, he can maybe just show up and be the best player in the gym whether he practiced or not. Doesn't mean that the talented player didn't have some discipline or the capacity for it. It's just they didn't need it like a person like me needed it. So if you want to play pro basketball overseas but you're unsigned right now, this time period is the biggest test of your discipline that you'll face when you're unsigned and trying to get in the game. Because here's a short list of the things you'll need to be doing. Number one, you need to eat right. Number two, you need to work out consistently in terms of frequency, time, location, process. Number three, you got to make sure you're getting proper rest. Number four, <coughs> excuse me, number four, you got to be consistently reaching out to and connecting with people who can help you get on. Whether that's agents, teams, camp directors, friends, former teammates who are playing overseas, you need to be doing that outreach on a consistent basis. Number two, number two reason that kills a lot of players' careers, not appreciating that your off the court business is just as important as your on the court business. This point is especially true for players who are like I was. If you're coming out of a D3 or a JUCO or no college at all, meaning you don't have any agents calling your phone trying to represent you, which means any action you get will have to be self-generated. You gotta put yourself on. I'm a natural salesperson, me. I like the marketing aspect of getting my name out there in the overseas marketplace when I was doing that. And to this day, I mean, I still do online. I'm still an online marketer outside of the, just, not just the basketball world, but in my business outside of basketball. I know how to talk myself up to other people in a way that speaks to their needs and not just to my needs. These days, I teach people how to do that. I teach people how to sell and brand themselves. Many athletes, you're not a salesperson, which is not a bad thing. I mean, you don't have to be a salesperson to be good at basketball. Many athletes are just athletes. You just play a sport. You play your game, maybe you play it really well, but you've never had any need for all this salesperson shit that I'm talking about until you actually do have a need for it. So if you're a less than D1 athlete, I mean D2, D3, G JUCO, NAIA, if you're less than a D1 level talent and you're trying to get into overseas basketball, you gotta put equal emphasis on the business side of your work as you put into the performance side of your work. Without that business handle, you may never get a chance to perform which includes, let me tell you a couple of things you gotta do. 
You got to be out there networking and connecting with people who can help you get on. You got to be budgeting your money so you can go to exposure camps, tryouts, the travel for those, the hotels, the food, the trainers, the workouts, the facilities. You got to pay for that stuff. So you got to be smart about budgeting your money so that you have the resources to take care of that. What about having people in place who can help you facilitate your needs? So if you need to go to the airport, you need somebody to pick you up from the airport. Where your stuff is going to go when you're overseas? You get a gig overseas, your first gig, you ain't got enough money to get your own place yet. So where are you going to put all your stuff? You know, who's going to hold you down while you're away and make sure your things are taken care of? That's this is a little thing, but it's a big thing. Taking care of your, if you got kids, if you got pets, if you got a car, making sure your bills get paid, that life stuff, who's going to help handle that for you when you're away playing overseas? Everybody walking this planet, understand, has a dream. And for some of us, life gets in the way of us achieving our dreams. So achieving our dreams. Anything that's not your play on the court, consider that the life part of it. All right, Everything other than basketball is life. Don't let your life get in the way of your game. Another mistake that players make when you're trying to get on overseas is you give up when it seems like nothing's working. All right, This is probably the, the main mistake right here that kills everything. This seems like such a trite thing that you don't even need to say it, yet it's the number one killer of dreams for all human beings in anything, in any ambitious endeavor. Don't even have to be sports, male or female. As I said earlier, professional basketball is a 1% industry. Being signed to a professional playing contract anywhere in the world puts you in the top 1% of every basketball player alive. Can you just think of that, how many people that is? The challenge is, I would estimate that around 10% of the world's basketball players have ideas about getting into the 1%, which means out of that, so out of everybody in the world who plays ball, about 10% of those people think they have a chance to play pro. Out of that 10%, only 1% of that 10 is actually going to make it, which means 9% who thinks they can ain't making it. And I'm going to take some of that, it'll take some mix of skill talent timing help from other people and just straight up luck for things to fall properly in place for you i'm gonna keep it real with you luck is part of the equation and a lot of people don't want to point that out but it is that's the truth of the industry and of every other industry where there are a whole lot of people who are trying to get in the game but ultimately not everybody can get in the game so something like having a hit startup company and entrepreneurship getting on as a a musical artist who sells a lot of records and becomes popular becoming an actor in a big movie a little bit of luck comes into that. You got to have skill, timing, be in the right place, know the right people, and a little bit of luck. That's part of the game. Again, sometimes you get the opportunity simply because you stuck to the job when everybody else decided that it was no longer worth the effort. That happens to a lot of people in life. That Other people give up, you stuck around, and you end up getting an opportunity just because you were there. You were in the right place at the right time. That might be all that it takes for you. But there's only one way to ever find out for sure, and that's to make sure you stay in the game until you get what you came for or until you're personally content with walking away, which is, which is a unique time period, a unique until for all of us. Now, last one. Reasons why pro basketball players or wannabe pro basketball players kill their own careers. Not being aggressive enough about obtaining your resume material, which is your game film. I've said this before and I say this again. Your game film is your resume. Nobody cares about your stats because you might have made them up. Nobody cares about you saying how hard you work because nobody gives a fuck about that. Everybody says that. Your game film is the only proof that you can actually play. So you need to get video of yourself playing basketball, playing well, playing with and against people who can actually play. And the more professional looking your video is, the better you look to the people who are watching it. So here's where players will ask questions. So let me answer these questions. Some players say, well, what if all I have is practice video, Dre? Well, that's all you got. So go listen to points one through four again. Like I just said, playing basketball, playing well, playing with and against other people who can play in a game. So if all you have is practice video, go get something else. All right, that's what you need to do. What if somebody says, well, what if I don't have anybody who can record video for me? Well, go make some friends or go hire somebody. All right, people will do anything for the right amount of money. They're easy to find, so go find them. It's 2020. You got a video camera right there in your hand, in your pocket all day. The person who just walked by you, they got a video camera. The panhandle on the corner got a video camera. They got a phone. Maybe it was acceptable to not have game film in 2005 when I was trying to get on. But for now, at now, today, it ain't acceptable anymore. So go get the video. In conclusion, there are more players trying to get into the pro basketball scene than there are jobs to satisfy everybody. You understand that? Everybody ain't getting on. I don't care how good you think you are. And while luck does play a role in who makes it versus who doesn't, 
avoiding the mistakes that I mentioned in this video, they will help you be better prepared for the opportunity that could make your luck happen. So make sure you're paying attention to these. And for those of y'all who don't know, I wrote a ton of articles on overseas basketball, how to get on and all that. Is at dreallday.com slash athletes with an S on the end. Dreallday.com slash athletes. Go there and read all those articles and get my book. If you want to play overseas, it's called the Overseas Basketball Blueprint. Go to balloverseas.com. That's balloverseas.com where you can get the book, the Overseas Basketball Blueprint, for free. All you got to do is take care of the shipping. I'll send it to any anyone, anywhere, worldwide, no matter where you are. Work on your game. Dreallday.com. Thank you.